What a day for Jimmy Barry Murphy! Brian Cody devastated, no doubt, as he feels deep sorrow in his heart now, for his team have been beaten. Look at that scoreboard. Cork, 19 points. Kilkenny, 14 points. A five-point win for the Rebels. They can be a great champions and uh, they went down with great pride and uh, you know in the modern game it's very very hard to survive with 14 men as we found in the Munster final but Kilkenny were I thought should play with phenomenal heart as they always do and uh, very very hard team to put away but you know we just about sought out in the end of that. Well I mean there's been a few ends of eras um, predicted all along over the past number of years you know and I don't think eras ever end really to be honest about it. Um, if end of an era means it's the end of the Kilkenny, of Kilkenny senior hurling team being competitive at inter-county level, I'd say it's um, something that shouldn't be allowed to happen. So let's wait and see. The Dublin in the far next time is going to be a massive game for us as well. They, ha- they also beat Kilkenny in a replay, which is a very difficult thing to do. And uh, you know, Anthony Daly has done a fabulous job with Dublin, and uh, it's just great to be there. And we'll think about it now tomorrow. Obviously, you've been at it an awful long time. Will you will you consider? Maybe that, that, that this might be the end for you, or is it too soon? Well, I have no idea. Obviously, you know, I don't, I don't come into today deciding this is this is whatever it is. Um, I have no idea at all. I, like every other year, I feel the same as every other year about it. I have no idea. There's no decision made about anything, so I won't even consider it for a long, long time. Oh, that's pretty definite. Now, there's so many talking points. First of all, Don Logan, in your opinion, should Henry Shefflin have been sent off? Yeah, well, like you said, Des, there's, there's loads of talking points. I think we're, we're, we're going to look at it here now. You know, the first couple of minutes, Henry was under pressure. There's a couple of things on it. Henry doesn't complain, but Lorcan, if you just listen here, if you're at home listening, we're trying to figure out where the... Where the act- so you actually hear something there. And I was looking at it from a number of different angles. It was actually he caught Lorcan on the hurley, so it was more loose than anything. You know, you, you do see a lot of that happening in the game. The second one... When you go to near the head with the hurley, you're asking for trouble there. And if anything, it was, it was clumsy. So, overall, a loose and a, a clumsy tackle. So, technically, it was two yellows. It, he considered himself unlucky with the first one. The second one was a deserved yellow. Eddie? Well, I've seen and <laughs> experienced several times where there's a slap of hurl across your hurl. Just, you know, and if that's going to be a, red, a yellow card, you know, there'll be hundreds of them dished out matches. So for me, it's a harsh sending off all in all. all but, right. um, you know, the second one, unfortunately, as we said, was head high. But the first one, for me, not even related to a booking. OK. The talking points continued at the start of the second half, ultimately led to the penalty. But before that, a rather bizarre start to it. Yeah, we, were, we watched this a couple of times, Des. And, uh, you know, look where the mess in the start now in the middle. Look, there's, you know, and he proceeds to throw in the ball. Look, and that's the mad thing about it. This is going on in front of Barry Kelly and he has thrown in the ball with this happening. Now as play goes on, I suppose no it's still... But uh, Owen Larkin carries in the ball straight and, you know, it was a great platform for the to attack but Richie Power, look, the legs are kicked from under him there as he goes in and then Owen Larkin sidesteps and to look. I think that speaks for itself, you know. Um, it's, it's, it's a wild pull to say the least and for me, it's the inconsistency and the refereeing is the issue there. But uh, here, um, I suppose, Tommy just seems to have... Uh, I don't know what he was thinking really to take off and you know I suppose he was trying to support play but uh, for this um, Anthony Dash does really really well. Some saves don't love. Outstanding saves, especially the reaction for the second one is incredible and you know I, I had the privilege of being able to train with good goalkeepers and himself and Martin Coleman over the last number of years and his reactions are exceptional and it's great to see him showing that. The issue is as I said Des there it, it, you know the inconsistency you know when you look at the two yellows for Henry and there was nothing dished out there. Barry Kelly went back and dealt with the two lads at midfield. But, you know, you have to question, why are you throwing a ball when lads are at that in front of you and they're not even looking at the ball? Mm. And then, you know, to miss the tackle and to as blatant and as obvious as you get. But I think that's the critical thing, Des. When you allow things like that to, to develop at the start of the play, it almost encourages other players, if you like, to become more, more liberal and get more mm. involved. So, like... It, it, it's 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 amazing that the game wasn't stopped. It's, yeah. it's it was hot and heavy today, and I think maybe Barry got a little bit excited at times. All right, then. Well, let's move on, and it might be painful for you, but we've asked you to yeah, show no, us the foundations of the Cork. Look, one thing we can say is is Cork were deserving for the win. And you see there, not too often that Jackie Tyrrell has stood up and attacked like that, but William Egan comes across dispossessed, and Colin Finley takes off. But it's William Egan's run here, just tracks back, no panic. Little lovely little dainty tip over the top, Pat Horgan or Pat Cronin coming onto it and again looking up, seeing what's on, pops it in and um, we have here is Daniel Carney or 
<laughs> yeah, Kearney, yeah. Kearney coming onto it. Lovely little pass. Pat Horgan, lovely little dummy and a wristy flick over the bar. That is as good a point as you'll see all year mm -hmm. from Pat Horgan. But again, it was William Egan's track in there. He worked non-stop. And this is an area of strength in Kilkenny is catching puck outs, opposition puck outs. Kieran Joyce is top notch at catching puck outs. And there we have Harmony catching a great ball. But again, Conor Sullivan coming out. Little look up again. And here's Jamie Collin coming onto it. Stands up, has time to have a look and pop it over the bar. And they've done that for the minute off. But this next bit of footage really sums up Cork's attitude today from the start. Um, Larkon, a, a loose pass, and Harmony again with a superb block. And again, himself and Luke O'Farrell, you know, not happy with his block down. He hunts down Jackie Tyrrell again, looks around, and Conor Lehan is standing outside. And that was what really epitomised Cork today. They were physical, they were, you know, they stood up to Kilkenny, I suppose, from the word go. It was their attitude, and they played a clever game as well. They played smart throughout the game. And again, look, one thing we can say is they were the better team today. They, 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 they hurled better from the start and I suppose they set the tone early and they were value for their win All aside right. from the controversial incidents. Well of course that sending off meant Kilkenny had to play the whole second half with only 14 men. They were okay initially but you felt that eventually it, it, it was difficult for them. Yeah I think that like, if, if you look at it Conor O'Sullivan was played as a spare man. No, he's the ideal man to play that role and that he's got a very good head and he's very settled but if you look at it from the very start you know Paul Murphy going for a, a point from this distance out, you know, I think it, 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 it didn't set a great tone. You really need to look at working the balls through the line, through the lines if possible. Again, if you look at this clip here, Connor is the spare man in front of the goals. If you play both men in the two corners, you need to play the low, ball low in in front of them. That's the type of area that the Kilkenny forwards would have been looking for the ball, giving them a chance. But again, you see it in over the top and into where Connor wants it. And time and time again today, in the second half, we saw this. I think this is a very good example of it here. If you look, Lester Ryan gets possession of the ball. He's got a number of options. Let the ball up the line. He's got other Kilkenny players that you can give possession to and let them recycle and look for the options inside with the head up. But again, if you're an inside man there, you're going to be extremely disappointed. And here's another example. Min, min, min free takes the option of not going up along the line and again hits an extremely high ball in. Kilkenny forwards have been famous over the last number of years for being able to win that type of ball, but it doesn't suit forwards most of the time. This is a great example. Watch Tom Kinney lifting his head here, to, here. Looks at the options, plays a very good ball down to Seamus Harnady. And just watch this here from Luke Farrell. His movement here is critical. And this was typical of Cork all day, moving the Kilkenny backs around, around the field. Great ball from Daniel Kearney into Patrick Horgan. But keep an eye on Luke Farrell. That's the type of movement Cork will need. And just one point to note, Cork haven't been scoring goals. They'll need that type of movement over the next couple of games if they are to get a goal. Here's a perfect example again. Jackie Terrell lobbing the ball in. You just look at the amount of Cork players that are there compared to Kilkenny players. And look, Kilkenny have been outstanding over the last number of years, outstanding tactically. But I think today that in the second half, they didn't do their forwards any favours with the ball that was being played in. Just before we go to man the match, Eddie, lots of people wondering, will Henry Shefflin keep going? Without a doubt. I'd say, please God, the man's body will uh, heal up over the winter now. Um, the club championship ahead, obviously, and uh, I've no doubt um, he won't want to sign off on a note like that today. So, speedy mm. recovery. And just to add to that, Des, I think every hurling person in Ireland wouldn't like to see uh, Henry signing off on that note mm. and would like to see him back next year. All right, so you're not allowed to retire. Henry <laughs> seems to be the word. OK, our nominees for man of the match, don't look. So our nominees today were Daniel Kearney really set the tone for Cork in the first 15 minutes, especially the amount of ball that he was on was incredible. Secondly, Tom Kinney, really good for Cork the last day and really good again for Cork today. Even the first 10 minutes, he was marking Henry Shefflin and, and set the tone by getting on top of, of Shefflin, which added to Shefflin's frustration. And then finally, Patrick Horgan. Everybody was very relieved that this guy wasn't suspended for this game and his contribution was immense today. All right, so we're good performance all over. Who, who got the overall award, Eddie? Yeah, the Glen Rovers man, Pat Horgan. Um, I suppose he was under big pressure today after being, you know, getting released and I think he, you know, he had the cut of a man determined today from play and from freeze. He was on tune, scored some exceptional points when Cork needed him. But all in all, um, a good workmanlike performance from Pat, fully deserved. All right, then, a good night down in the Glen. Let's hear, then, from Pat Horgan. 
Patrick Horgan, congratulations. What's it like when you play in a big match like that and everything just seems to go right? It's like it's it's like something that probably never happened to us before, like you know. So um, we're just delighted like that we want to qualify and then we're playing in two weeks. But uh, to be Kilkenny obviously is a huge thing, like you know, probably the best team that ever played, like, and uh, it's massive for us. And should look for the next two weeks we're just going to work hard and another big game against Dublin. So we we've not won yet, you know. And a man of the match performance from you are the Centra Orchi man of the match, and Kieran White from Centra is here to give you your award, Patrick. Man, Patrick, you brightened up today. Thank you. Obviously a Cork man of the bright look today.